Okay, again, thanks for, for coming in. I'm, I'm Todd Allen. Um, thank you for following my channel. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about um, the concept of does money define you or should money define you? Okay. And I was saying that I believe that money should and does should define you and it does define you. But it's 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 how we are perceived as what we what we value money to be, how we define money to be is the biggest thing. And a lot of people define money as being that paper currency. But again, paper currency does not have any value. Uh, the paper in itself doesn't have any value. Paper currency is based upon the faith that we have in its value. It's not backed by silver. It's not backed by gold currently. It's only based by faith. Uh, this is why we call it credit or credo, right? It's based upon uh, the faith that people have in its value. But we also know that paper currency changes in value based upon the demand for it. We see that in the United States, that the value has uh, depreciated in the United States because there's so much of it. But worldwide, we see that the value of the, of the dollar has, has gone up. Uh, we see that uh, in, in the Forex market, we see that the dollar relative to the euro has basically uh, gone up. The euro has fallen and the dollar has gone up. And we see that the euro has taken a significant uh, hit, especially during the uh, the violence which is taking place in the Ukraine uh, with Russia, that the uh, the demand for the euro has gone down and uh, has gone down with the demand for dollars having gone up. Why? Because there has been a, there. They say that there's a run to to safety. That people believe that the dollar has more stability because of the fighting that's taking place in the Ukraine. And so the dollar has appreciated, meaning that more and more people want the dollars. And so the value has gone up. We see that with inflation, uh, even though that we say that the dollar has depreciated in the United States, simply means that they need more dollars now in order to pay for normal goods and services. We see that the value of eggs, um, that the, uh, the cost of eggs has increased by 100%. We see that the cost of gasoline has gone up substantially, that overall the rate of inflation in the United States has gone up to about eight and a half percent. And historically, year over year, it has been about three percent. And so what we see that the real value of the dollar has declined. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we take the value of the dollar and we subtract out the rate of inflation, we see what the real value is. The real value of the dollar has, has declined. Uh, if banks are giving you, let's say that a bank is giving you 5% interest, and, and, and if you can find or tell me where a bank is giving you 5% interest, please let me know. Uh, drop a comment in the, uh, in the chat here, um, because that's a bank that we pretty much want to take a look at. But if you take the interest rate that banks are paying you, the, effect, the, the nominal rate or the rate which they state, and you subtract the rate of inflation from that, okay, that will tell you uh, what the real rate is. So at this particular point, if we're looking at an inflation rate of eight and a half percent, and let's say again that the bank is paying you 5%, we have a negative three and a half, three and a half percent, which means that the value is, is not there. This is why things cost more. And so if we're talking about, this again, we're talking about paper currency. If we define ourselves by paper currency and saying, well, if the money, the money that you're defined by money, I would agree that if we're talking about paper currency, it, it shouldn't define you. However, if we're talking about the way I'm defining money, I think that this should define you. What I'm talking about is the social contract money that you as a living human being born and shaped in the image of the most high God, the value that you give to society is directly related to the amount of money that you have. So if you don't have any money, it's a reflection of the amount of service that you're giving, right? It doesn't mean that you're a good or bad person. It doesn't give the value that you have as an individual or as a person. It just simply means that the value that you're giving society. There's a reason why if we have what we call low paying jobs, right? We have low paying jobs because there is a, um, there's not a high demand for that particular job, or there's enough workers that could do that particular job that they would pay a lower salary. 
that's what that means. There's only one Oprah Winfrey. Why? Because there's only she can only do what she does. There's only one of her so that she makes a lot of money relative to the value that she gives because she satisfies the needs or wants of more people. That's why she receives a large income to doing that. We all cannot be Oprah, but we all can give value to society. We can solve more people's problems. We can be there for more people. The, the world is a big place. There, there are billions of people on this planet. And each one of us has a particular talent. We have particular talents and skills. The challenge is that we've lost this desire or lost this, this um, the desire to, to be more. We've lost this due to our programming. All men and women are created equal until they leave the hospital. It doesn't mean that we're not equal in the eyes of, of the Almighty. It simply means that because we go to different environments, we have different outlooks on the world and different views. Now, it reminds me that when I was, uh, when, when I'm looking at my family and, and where I come from, my family had certain views. We, we had certain views and we lived in an environment where most of the people around us had the same ideas or same views. Hardworking people want the best for their families, but we believed that our way to status was to buy things that gave the appearance of having status, whether it be clothes, whether it be car, whatever it was. A lot of people in the past, we used to say it was trying to keep up with the Joneses. Well, you know, it, it, a lot of things were, were based upon what we had, the type of tennis shoes that we had when we were playing basketball or, or if we had a new basketball or whatever it is, that, that those were things were outside of ourselves because we define money by the things that we wore. But I just want to say this, that if it's on your ass, it's not an asset, right? If you put it on your behind, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's an asset. An asset is something that grows in value. Now, we all are assets, but we have to change our mindset. So how do I define money? I define it this way. M is maximize your dream. Maximizing your dream is, again, going back to what you thought what you wanted to do, the value that you wanted to give to the world when you were small. When I was small, and again, I was I said this before, uh, and, and I know that most people didn't hear this um, because of the, the difficulty that we had at the beginning. But when I was young, I used to watch this show called Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. And I wanted to build a Johnny Sacco flying robot. Why? Because I wanted to get involved in engineering. I wanted to, to have something that fought monsters and, and protected people, all of those different things. That was, that was my goal. And when I was younger, I wanted to become a pilot and, and all these kinds of things because I was interested in, in the, the thrill of the creating something that was useful to society. Somehow, as I got older, a lot of that was beaten out of me or, or programmed out of me, if you will. And our education system has a, does a good job of, of uh, deprogramming us in many instances. Um, and that's unfortunate. So I kind of lost that. But whatever your dream is, whatever your goal, and my dreams have changed and my goals have changed as I've gotten older and as I've become more and more deprogrammed. And this is why I've gone into business and I, and I kind of do the, the things that I do now in, in helping people to, to better their circumstances and create lifestyle. But maximizing your dreams is very, very important to have something that is deep inside of you that you want to give birth to. That's very important and we have to continue that. So maximize your dream. The second step is organizing your life to overcome obstacles. You're going to run into challenges along the way. You're going to run into situations that want to, quote, deprogram you and to want to steal your dream. But we have to organize ourselves in such a manner that we overcome these obstacles. And again, our school system doesn't help us do that. Our school system teaches us that, hey, you know, don't be too big for your britches, right? That you should just get an education, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic, and then go out and get a job and work in somebody else's dream. And then you work 40, 50 years of your life, then you retire, then soon afterwards you expire. That's not the kind of lifestyle that, that most of us in the world want. Most of us want to make a difference. And so by creating, maximizing our dream and organizing our lives to overcome obstacles, 
this is going to help us to create more and more value. And that's, you know, and we're talking about define money defining us. That's going to define the value that we give to the world. The third thing is to network to net worth. Network to net worth. We have to be around life like-minded people. We have to create a tribe of individuals. We have to create um, a group that has similar mindsets that we do. And what do I mean by similar mindsets? That want to give value to our fellow man. Being around people that don't simply want to take from society, but they want to give, that they want to help solve problems that people have. And the more problems you solve, society benefits you by giving you more and more paper currency or more and more wealth in that regard. But you are the born and shaped in the image of the most high God. So you have the creative ability to create the world, the life that you want, because you are the money maximizing your dream, over, uh, organizing your life to overcome obstacles, networking to network, and E, enjoying life. Why is enjoying life important? Because as human beings, we want to do one of two things. We want to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And this is why I don't like the word discipline. People have become, you want to be disciplined. Well, discipline to me has a negative connotation because when I was younger, my mother would discipline me with a Hot Wheels track. And she did it because she loved me. I understand that. She wanted to guide and shape me to do things correctly. And it doesn't mean that, you know, she was a bad person or, you know, anything like that. But, you know, to receive discipline was to get a spanking, right? or to be put in timeout or to be put on punishment and not to be able to watch television or any of those things. That was being disciplined. Then discipline had a, had a negative connotation. So what I would say is that in enjoying life, we want to create lifestyles that we do things that we enjoy. And it's just lifestyle. It's not being disciplined. It's just what we do. We wake up in the morning, we brush our teeth, we comb our hair. Well, <laughs> those of you who have it, right? Uh, we brush our teeth, plumb our hair, we get washed up, we get cleaned up, and then we get set to go on our way. That doesn't mean we have discipline. It just simply means that that's our lifestyle. When we enjoy what we do, we, we continue, we, we look for avenues and ways that we can, can continue that, that, um, that momentum, right? We want to continue in that vein. And so uh, what's this? Okay, you can just listen. Okay, absolutely, you guys. Uh, make sure if you if you like the content, uh, hit the like button on uh, on my um, my YouTube page. If you'd like to to make a comment here, um, simply go into the chat, post a comment, and uh, we can definitely chop it up and talk about that. And I appreciate again you all listening and and supporting my channel. Uh, if you'd like to continue to support the channel, let me put this here so you all can see this too. That uh, if you'd like to to support. Uh, my channel, there is the, the PayPal, uh, Todd Allen 01 at PayPal. Um, if you'd like to, please do. If not, that's okay as well. Please just continue to uh, to follow me on my YouTube channels. You, I have several YouTube channels. You have the Todd Allen uh, YouTube, and then uh, you also have Professor Econ, all one word on YouTube. You can also follow me on Instagram, Todd underscore Allen, and then you can also follow me on TikTok. Um, Todd Allen at Privacy Consultant. So, M-O-N-E-Y, maximize your dream, organize your life to overcome obstacles, network to net worth, enjoy life. And then lastly is why is you yield value. The more value you give to society, society benefits you by giving you more. Um, let me give you some examples. In the Bible, we have the 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 story of the talents where one person was giving given five talents another three another one and this then the master went away conducting his business and when he came back he wanted an accounting of what the servants had done with the talents that he had provided for them well the one that had five talents doubled it had made ten the one that had three made five and then the one that had one buried it and put it in the ground because he was afraid 
He didn't want to put it at risk, and he wanted to make sure that he had, had taken good care of the talent that the master had given him. What do we learn from this story? Well, the one that was given, the one that was given five made ten. The one that gave, had, was given three made five. They both were called what? Good and faithful servants. The one that had one and did not do anything with it was chastised, and the one was taken from him and given to the one who had produced more. So what this tells us is that the talents that we have. Hey, James, thanks, brother. The talents that we have, we are responsible for doubling those talents and doing what? Creating more value. And the more value that we create, we're given even more. So if we don't have money, it's not because you're not a quality person. It simply means you have to give more value. That's what it means. Now, I'm not saying that people that give more value are better than others. I'm not saying it's, it's, not a, it's not an issue of better or best because the terms better or best are subjective, right? It, 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 it's just subjective. What a person thinks or feels, that's their subjectivity. Objectivity is the measure of money, objectively. If I was to measure this table, I would use what? A ruler. And this rule, and it would tell me what the length of this table would be. Then I could give the same measuring stick to to James or Trader Reg who are listening, and then they could take it, and then they could, you know, measure it, and they should get the same result. That's objectivity. Objectivity is a measuring stick. So the money that we receive, the paper currency that we receive, the paper currency has no value. It's the measuring stick. That's all it is. The measuring stick is to how much value that we're giving. So does money define you? Absolutely. It defines the value that you give to society. That's it. As men, we want status. And so in order to get status, what do we do? Sometimes we buy the car, we buy the house, we buy the, the clothes, whatever it is. We buy these things because we think that this gives us status. Okay. Uh, James says, you can't expect to get everything out of the universe and not put anything in it. That's that's. Very, well, a lot of people expect that, James. A lot of things, a lot of people expect that. But but the value that we get, the value that we put in, we receive that value back. Now, we may not receive that value in dollars and cents, but we certainly receive that value back in, in other in other regards. Again, some are subjective, others are objective. All right. Um, I'm gonna put you guys on hold one second here because I gotta knock at the door, the window here. Okay. All right. As you all may have known, that uh, my office is on the first floor, and so my wife is uh, knocked on the window here because she's bringing bringing me my dinner. Thank God for my wife. Uh, she's she's a beautiful person. She she cares about me. She thinks she thinks about me a lot. And um, I could not be happier with someone who loves me and takes care of me and has my best interests at heart. Uh, and I, I can't, can't ex cannot express how thankful to, to God I am for, for her. Um, but as I was saying, again, the value that we receive, and this is an example, James, of the value that we get, that we get back out. The fact that, you know, we, we, my wife and I sew into one another. And because we do that, we get, we get back what we put in. And that's, a, that's a prime example of that. Um, but again, maximizing our dreams, organizing our life to overcome obstacles, networking to net worth, enjoying life and yielding value. We are defined by the money we have because we are the money. And the paper currency that we get is a definition of the value that we give to the world. So the more value we give to the world, the more we give.